In my previous video, I talked about some transformations and adjustments that you may need to make in your data set before doing any analysis. And uh, I talked about uh, several types of uh, transformations and adjustments. In this video, I'm going to talk about one very important type of adjustment and transformation that you may need to make in your data. And this transformation is called mathematical transformation and it is applied on a data set if uh, your data shows variation that increase or decrease uh, over time or across uh, different parts of the series. We may have a series YT which may behave like this. The variation in the data set changes over time. So see here this series is pretty stable in this part of uh, the data but as we are moving in time this series is showing us more variation as compared with the earlier part of the series. So seems like uh, the variation in the series is increasing as we are moving in time. So an easier way of uh, dealing with this type of data is to take the log of the series which is much easier to take and is pretty useful when uh, stabilizing a series like uh, this. And one advantage of taking the log of the series is that it is very easier to interpret if the series is showing you variations those are not uh, constant over time you may need to take uh, the log uh, transformation so that is the uh, one way of uh, dealing with uh, data like this one type of uh, transformation which is very useful is called box cox uh, transformation and uh, this type of uh, transformation is used on a data set or a, on a time series which behaves something like this and these uh, variations may not be constant across uh, different parts of the series. We may need to adjust a series like this before applying any forecasting model. So one way of uh, dealing with this type of uh, variation is to apply Boxcox uh, transformation. And this transformation depends on the value of uh, lambda. So what we do is say we have a series yt. So this could be any time series. Say this is electricity demand in Australia across time. So what we can do is we can transform this series yt into a series say wt. We can take uh, the log of uh, this series yt and in this case the value of our lambda will be zero. So essentially what we are doing is we are taking the log of each value of uh, this series and we are calling our new series wt. On the other hand we can apply a function like uh, this function of the series in that case we are transforming our yt series by using a function like this and we are calling our new series wt so essentially the idea here is to transform our yt series into a new series wt by either taking the log or by applying a, a function like this and essentially this transformation depends on the value of lambda it could be zero or it could have uh, uh, any other value you don't have to find uh, the value of uh, lambda that will stabilize this series r will do this job for you so first thing you have to do is you have to transform your series and instead of using yt series you will be using wt series in your analysis and uh, this wt could come either from lambda equals zero or any other lambda value after you estimate the model you can reverse the transformation to obtain the forecast on the original scale so remember this wt it could be in the log form or in this form after we have uh, fitted the model we have to reverse this series wt to a series yt so that we can get the forecasts on the original scale it is pretty easier you can uh, take the exponent of a wt to get uh, the original series yt or you can reverse uh, this function that we used earlier by using this formula. So one advantage of using uh, this uh, Boxcox uh, transformation is that the results are insensitive to the value of lambda. So remember we choose the lambda that stabilizes the series and uh, what this lambda does is it makes the size of the variation same across the whole series. To calculate the value of the lambda we use this function box cox lambda and this will choose an appropriate value of lambda that will stabilize the series and then we can apply box cox transformation using box cox 
function. So let's go to R and let me show you an example of a box cox transformation in R. Okay, so we are in R and uh, we are looking at this uh, data set which is electricity demand in Australia. So see here in the earlier years, seasonal variation was not that uh, high as compared with some of the recent years. So seems like uh, seasonal variation is uh, increasing as we are moving in time. So this series is not uh, showing us a constant variation across all time periods. So we need to stabilize this series. So what we can do is in the first step, we can calculate the value of lambda by using this function box cox uh, lambda function and we're going to pass uh, our data set our time series into this data set and by using this we can calculate our lambda which is 0.26 and we can save uh, this lambda as uh, lambda by using this assigning operator so that in the future we can use this value 0.26 in the next step we are going to pass our original series to this function box cox so that will be our first argument in this box cox uh, function our second argument will be this lambda that we saved earlier and remember the value is 0.26 we can apply this lambda and this box cox uh, transformation on our original series and then i'm going to auto plot this function to see how this series look like now so looking at uh, this series now after applying this box cox transformation we see that uh, the seasonal variations are pretty stable across uh, different parts of the series as compared with our original series so we can say that this series is much more stabilized or homoscedastic as compared with the other series so this is how you use mathematical transformation to stabilize uh, your data set and uh, you apply box cox transformation when your series uh, shows variations those are not constant across different parts of the series so you calculate a value of lambda and then use that lambda in the box cox function to stabilize the series all right i'll see you in the next video bye bye